said the perfection of joyous effort is essential for the other five perfections, right? Mm -hmm. um, the first three perfections lead to the collection of merit, which leads to the body of an enlightened being. And the fifth and sixth perfections with concentration of wisdom lead to the mind of an enlightened being, right? And then we said that there are some obstacles to joyous effort, meaning happily engaging in virtue. One is being lazy. Another is some kind of just attraction to wrong deeds. And then thirdly is feeling discouraged or having some kind of low self-esteem, I can't do it, it's not possible kind of thing, right? <coughs> and then uh, Master Shanti Deva goes into three causes of laziness. The first of which uh, is being attract attracted to uh, uh, enjoyable worldly objects like cafe time or TV time or magazine time or whatever it might be. And uh, the second one, please say Nila. Nila. Yeah. Tempe Sepa. Tempe Sepa. And uh, this is a Nia sleep. Uh, La Tempe is for a while, Sepa is to crave. It's getting addicted to lying around, lazing around, mm -hmm. overeating, um, just sort of, just kind of like enjoying, your, enjoying lying around, um, eating too much, eating the wrong kind of food. Unfortunately, most of the food that you find in the deli or takeout is the wrong kind of food. You know, makes you sluggish and lethargic and tired, uh, not conducive to concentration or having good energy. So, mm, you know, you've got to get. Yes, he did. He just said deli. Did you just say deli? Yes, he did. Yeah. I don't know. Because he's looking at me accusingly every time you say something negative. I'm his example of that. I a deli's not negative. Ah, he just said deli. Said so food in the deli. Most of the food in the deli. Yeah. You know, the, the point is, is we've got to eat the right kind of food so that we can practice, so that we can fuel our, fuel our bodies nicely, so that we can do what we've got to do. And, uh, you know, everyone's body is different. Everyone needs to know what works for them. You know, it's too much of the wrong food, and we're lethargic, we're lazy, we're sleepy, we're not going to meditate, you know? You're not going to meditate after you eat a pizza, you know? You're not going to meditate after you eat a lot of sugar, right? And it's especially true if one's on retreat, one has to be very careful, but uh, even in regular life, uh, eating the wrong things can drag down our energy and make it hard for us to be motivated and, and effortful you know, in, in accomplishing our projects. So then the third thing that Master Shantideva uh, says promotes laziness, please say, uh, Korwe, Korwe. Dupnel, <coughs> Dupnel. Lami Kyowa. Lami Kyowa. Uh, Korwe is uh, samsara. What's the definition of samsara? Basically, it is death and the aging of this body and this life. I mean, that's the simple, basic definition of samsara. Technically, your aging and your death, caused by your past deeds and your mental afflictions, is samsara, right? You are cyclic existence. It's not out there somewhere, right? You are suffering. You're the condition of suffering. So, Korwe uh, Dupnyal is the suffering of this life. And... Uh, mm, Mikyoa means uh, to fail, uh, to get fed up with. Me is not neg negation. So it is to not be fed up with psych cyclic existence, to not be fed up with our suffering state and the nature of our, of our being. Right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, the point here is, is the, and Master Shantideva says the first two causes of laziness really contribute to the third. Right? We enjoy indulging in worldly pleasures. pleasures. We like to laze around. And we're not fed up with cyclic existence. We're not fed up with suffering. We're not fed up with our suffering body and our suffering mind and our mental afflictions and our aches and pains. Because exactly what you were saying earlier, Bruce, you know, that's a, a burger today for payment on Tuesday. You know, I, I enjoy my cafe and my latte. And I'm enjoying it now. And I like spending hours at the cafe. And, and so, yeah, it's a pretty good life. What's not to like? <laughs> so Master Shanti Davis says, this is a big obstacle to joyous effort in terms of doing virtue happily, right? Mm. So, you know, if you look at who comes to church or who goes, who takes religion seriously by and large, that's the old people, right? <laughs> Why? Because the people around them are dead. <laughs> you know, their relatives have died, their friends have died. You know, maybe 20 of the people they've known have died. And they're, you know, they, they've woken up to the fact that <coughs> death is certain, 
you know, it's going to happen, and it's not that far off. Um, so Master Shanti Davis says, like, don't wait till you get that old. He says, mm -hmm. do it while you're alive. It doesn't take a genius to figure out that we're going to die, right? It's like we refuse to admit it, and we have some kind of blinders on. So, contemplation number five, please, I heard you. Contemplation five? Mm -hmm. We skipped four. Did we? No, what was four? What called us laziness? Oh, go for it. Right. What promotes the feeling of laziness is thought, the sweet enjoyment of some pleasure, as well as craving for time spent sleeping, all leading to a failure to feel a sense of disgust for the pain of the circle of life. He said it much more eloquently than I did. <laughs> We'll go ahead and do number five. Contemplation five. Lambs to the slaughter. Haven't you even got eyes to see how those in the world with you have gone steadily to the slaughter? To sit here still and enjoy your sleep is just the same as the oxen waiting for the butcher. So this addresses your your Tuesday hamburger point. You know, Master Shanti Davis says, look, you know, you go, you see a slaughterhouse, and all the cows are contentedly munching on the grass. There's this big, huge building, right, that nobody comes out of. No cows come out of. <laughs> you know, and they're all just milling about, munching away, and contentedly chewing their cud. And you know, they go in, they don't come out, and everybody's oblivious. They're all oblivious, right? And um, they're too stupid to figure it out, right? Message. It's like cows are too stupid to figure out that that big building over there, no one gets out alive, right? And they're just going about their business in the meantime, and uh, they just sit there and they're clueless. So Master John David says, "Yeah, that's us. <laughs> we're we're like that." He says, uh, "Most of us are just like that. People all around us are being led away by the Lord of Death, and they're not coming back, you know." Lord of Death is leading everyone around us to slaughter one by one, steadily. It's not like once in a while someone dies. It's like people all around us are dying all the time. It's not a mystery, you know. We know this. We see this. We're not like the cows who don't understand what happens when you go through the door, you know. So he says, uh, you know, the people alive in the world are just disappearing all around us. And um, we're somehow still not figuring it out. So Master Shanti Davis says, like, wake up, people. You know, how are you not how are you not seeing and understanding this? How can you not notice the reality of the situation? He says, Don't be like the stupid cop. He says, Don't sit there and watch TV while the people around you are disappearing, you know, and being slaughtered by the Lord of Death. And uh, you know, he says, uh, you know, they're leading the cows through one by one, people are being led through one by one. There's no difference. Don't sit there wasting your time watching TV, contentedly going about your business. You know, as every every passing moment brings you closer to slaughter. So he says, you know, so he says, do something about it. So that's, okay, verse number six, contemplation number six. I still have time. Death is coming to take you, moving at incredible speed. In the time you have left, try to amass good karma. When the moment arrives, it's true you may give up your laziness. But what good can it do at a time so wrong? You haven't got to this just yet. The others just started. And yet, another has half still left to do. Suddenly, then does the Lord of Death make his arrival. And in your mind, you can only cry, He kills me. You know, there are, there are texts in the Buddhist canon where it stops mid-sentence. You know, they're carving and it just stops mid-sentence because the author died in the middle of writing the, writing the, the line. You know, and they just, they're in the can like that. They're like, well, that's how it is. You know, there's the book. Right? And, you know, we're the same way. And that's, you know, it's the same for us. It's like, you know? <laughs> you know? We make all these plans, right? It's like, well, you know, I'm going to do this in six months and I'm going to trade in my car. I get a two-year lease and I'm going to trade in the car. And then I'll work at this job for this long, and then I'll go to that job with my apartment lease, and I'm going to do this, and this is going to be done in three months. You know, then I'm going to make my vacation in the spring. You know, boom, 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 right? Mm -hmm. So right, we've got all these plans, right? And uh, everybody who ever died had all these plans, 
right? Nobody thought they were going to die before the plans were implemented, right? Just like the guy who died in the middle of the sentence writing the book. So suddenly, boom, you know, they got all these plans and suddenly, boom, they're dead. <laughs> you know? So Master Shanti Davis said, what the hell did you think you were going to do at the moment you died? Did you think you were all of a sudden going to become a master meditator at the time of death? Were you thinking all of a sudden you're going to do all your practice, collapse all your practice into like the last 10 minutes at the time of your death? Did you somehow think that like after you got cancer, you'd become a master meditator? Were you thinking that like, you know, when you're in the hospital on, on the ventilator that somehow you're going to perfect your practice and get enlightened? I mean, what are you thinking? I mean, you know, you don't know when you're going to die. All these people get, are, are dropping like flies all over the place. So, he says, forget it, you know? You can't start meditating when you're, when you're close to death. And that's not, what, what is that going to accomplish? He says, it's, it's crazy. He says, if you wait too long, you just won't be able to succeed in your practice. You know? It isn't later. There isn't later, you know? Um, we get to a certain age, and it's difficult to sit, and we can't sit long enough, right? Things start to hurt, and it's too, bless you, it's too unpleasant, right? So what Master Shantideva says, quit fooling yourself. This whole thing, I'm going to do my retreat next year. You know, I'm going to do, I don't have time for this later. Everybody thinks later, but nobody does later, right? Later never comes, by and large. So if you're not going to do it now, you're probably not going to do it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so if you're going to do something now, then you've got to start now. Because if you don't start now, you're probably never going to start. So um, you're not going to be able to take steps in the final days and hours of our life to accomplish what we didn't accomplish throughout our entire life. It's impossible. It's just too late. So don't think that uh, there's a later. There is no later. So uh, there is a time when it will be too late. You know, we think, well, later, I'll do it later. But then we think that we'll always have later. But we won't always have later. And the time when it's too late will come. It will be too late to practice. It will be too late to accomplish the things that we need to accomplish. And then we'll be screwed, you know, because we didn't do what we needed to do in the time we had. So if you're not planning now and acting now to prepare for your death and doing meditation, doing retreats, and doing practices, you probably won't. Um, and so, you know, basically, you know, the idea, Master Shanta Davis' point here is wake up. If you're not doing it now, stop kidding yourself. You're probably not going to do it. And that's the point of that verse. Okay, number seven. What it feels to die. What is it that you imagine you do at that moment, tormented by the memory of the wrongs you've done, and with the roar of the hell realms in your ears bring, bringing such terror that you cover your body in sh shit and reach the depths of insanity? So, you know, some people say, oh, well, I'll... I'll meditate when I die and I'll reach enlightenment during the death process. You know, I'll do POA practice or I'll do some other practice and I'll become enlightened at the time of death or I'll, I'll accomplish my needs at the time of death. And it's kind of a crazy idea. It's, it is a crazy idea. And Master Shanti Deva is making that point. He's saying, look, um, to think that you're going to be, in, be able to go into some deep meditative state at the time of death is really unrealistic and pretty foolish. You know, this I mean, if you think you can do it, just go stand on a ledge somewhere. You know, go up on the roof and stand on the ledge and have somebody behind you go, just go like, like that, right? And look at and push you over and see how you feel with, see how you're feeling and see if you can go into a deep meditative state at that moment, right? Because at the time of death, it's a lot worse than that. There's this, there's this um, incredible fear of dying that everyone has. And the reaction we have once we feel like somebody's pushing us over the edge comes up at the time of death and much worse. And they say that as you, as you die, you go through a process where the mind is in total chaos. The basis, the, the, the mind, the brain is, is stopped. The electrical impulses are short-circuiting. And so the basis of, of uh, consciousness is in chaos. And uh, the mind and the physical, the physical basis that supports the mind is collapsing. So... Um, we go into these incredible, terrifying hallucinations as the electrical short-circuiting occurs. And uh, Master Shanti Davis says, "Look, you know, when you reach that state, you're going to be, you're going to be, you know, shitting yourself. 
you're going to be so terrified that you shit yourself. And uh, you're going to be in terror, you're going to be scared to death, you're going to be like a crazy person. He says, forget it. If you think you can meditate, it's ridiculous. It's the most terrifying moment of your entire life. And there was a special pain at the time of death. So something like having your chest crushed. At the time of death, that <coughs> that comes over, over oneself. And it's to think that one's going to go into some deep state of meditation while having wild, insane-like hallucinations with the feeling of being crushed. It's just crazy. It's not going to happen. So he says impossible. So uh, there are four things, four experiences at the time of death that are on the homework. Um, the first one is, is uh, you're tormented by memories of bad things you did in this life. And it, 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 it is like that. Um, as we're dying, um, in Buddhism we say it is the case that you review your life and you see clearly all the things you've done in your life. And it's a kind of torment. And you have a very clear memory of all the negative things you've done in your life. And it's a kind of torment. Um, it's a very serious, painful thing to be aware that we have all of this negativity that we're taking with us, all this karma. And uh, we can't fool ourselves anymore at the time of death. We know it was wrong. Uh, there's no reason to fool ourselves. And at that moment, we we're honest with ourselves and we just see it for what it is. So we start to feel really bad because of that. We start to feel really horrible because of that. Uh, secondly, uh, you hear terrible sounds of, of people tearing each other apart. You begin to hear sounds of the hell realms. Uh, so according to Buddhism, uh, they say, well, Master Shantideva says you hear the roar of the hells. So according to Buddhism, um, in the hell realms, there are beings that are just, you're, you're born there spontaneously, fully formed, uh, aware and conscious, and all the beings there are just attacking each other, ripping at each other, tearing each other apart, trying to destroy and kill each other and hurt each other. So from the instant you arrive, your entire life, every single being there, is attacking you and you're attacking them and everyone's just tearing at each other and killing each other. And so you have this horrible sound of an entire realm or planet uh, of beings just murdering each other you know, in this hellacious fashion. So <clears throat> trying to rip each other to pieces. So um, you get a premonition of it and you know you're going there and you get this, this horrible feeling. And so um, Perhaps that's why people don't want to die, right? They've had many, many past lives, and there may be perhaps some deep, uh, deep awareness of that or deep sense of that. Um, okay, number three, uh, uh, you defecate on yourself from fear. Um, and so mm, they say that um, mm, out of terror, um, the sound that you hear and the awareness you have is such terror that you just can't control yourself and you lose control of your bowels and your body. And uh, you're so frightened that you just automatically defecate. Uh, and then uh, the fourth point is, is uh, you become totally insane. Uh, they say as you start to die, uh, especially after your outer form is dead, uh, but on a more subtle level the mind is still there, going to these heavy hallucinations. And for all intents and purposes you're insane and you can't, you can't think a straight thought. Uh, at the moment of death, the uh, mind is for all intents and purposes insane. So these are mass, these are four arguments that Master Shantideva gives to wake up and not kid ourselves about needing to do it now and thinking that, well, somehow I'll wait till later when I'm closer to death. Mm. He said, you've got to get, basically he says, you know, you've got to get to your Buddha paradise before the shit hits the fan, before you're too close to death, or before you're at the time of death. You have to take care of things now. <coughs> Contemplation number eight, please. <coughs> I'm so terrified right now. <laughs> I've never been scared of death until this moment. <laughs> Is that a good thing? You tell me. <laughs> okay. Examine your expectations. You set your hopes on results, unwilling to t make any effort. Sufferings shower down on those less ab least able to bear them. Already in the embrace of death, you imagine yourself an immortal cry out when sufferings come to destroy you. You must make use of this boat, the human life you have, to cross over the great river of suffering. The boat is hard to find again later. Do not sit then, ignorant one. At this moment, they are asleep. You give up the highest kind of pleasure, the holy dharma, infinite numbers, 
of causes that bring you pleasure? Why is it you are attracted so much to being distracted by causes for pain, to business and the like? So here, Master Shanti Dev is addressing uh, our expectations. He says we have, he talks about three expectations that we have, mm, uh, especially as we die. He said, you know, all humans unreasonably assume that um, good things will come to them. You know, we just have this expectation that life is going to be good, or I want it to be good. That's what I was saying before. You know, um, just this sense of things will always work out, things will always be good, my future will always be good. Why wouldn't things be good? I mean, I expect to have a good future, right? I'm counting on a good future. Shouldn't have to do too much, it's just going to happen, right? I mean, there's this sort of implicit thing that is in my mind, and perhaps it's universal. I think Mr. Shanti Davis is saying it's universal. The sense of the future is going to be all right. You know, everything's going to just work out fine. Everything's going to come to me that needs to come to me. No worries. It'll all work out. Right? Mr. Shanti Davis says, Bull. <laughs> I want to say the whole thing, but I'm restraining myself. Bull ass. That's as far as I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> he says, if you're smart, you know, you'll plan for your future paradise now and do whatever it takes to get there. It's not the case that good things will automatically come to us. The only things that will come to us are things that we've caused. You know, and if we're not causing our future happiness and our future paradise, it's not going to come to us. So don't just go through life thinking everything's going to be okay and have some expectation that it will just work out. I can do whatever I want. I can be as lazy as I want. I can be as mindless as I want. I can squander as much of my life doing non-virtue or neutral activity as I want. And oh, it'll all just somehow work out. No. He makes the point. The only thing you're going to get is what you cause. And if you're not causing your paradise and if you're not causing your future happiness, you're not going to get it. So don't, don't be delusional about your life. And at the time of death, you don't want to be sitting around going, uh. So, you know, this, people have this crazy attitude that somehow it's going to work out even though they don't cause it. They don't create it. And then secondly, um, so people just think they're going to live for a long time. We have this, humans, human beings here feel like they're immortal. Like they have a fixed lifespan. Like, no, I'm going to live to 75 or 85 or whatever it is. I'm going to be around that long. I'm planning my life based upon that. That's what I expect. That's what I think is going to happen. I got time. So there's this expectation about death that it's coming much later. It's not imminent. It's not right around the corner. And that's crazy. You know, it's just a delusion. So he says, you know, we need to be making efforts now because of this. If you're not making efforts now, then you're, you, you just have these crazy ideas in your mind. You think somehow you're an immortal and you'll live for a fixed lifespan for some specific duration of time. You won't. And then the last point is, is as you get older, your ability to withstand pain your ability to withstand pain diminishes greatly, and we lose tolerance for change and ambiguity. So as we get older, our capacity is diminished. As things become more difficult, as life becomes more difficult, as things don't work out, it becomes harder and harder for us to overcome those obstacles and to be able to practice and do the things we need to do. And so we need to do what we've got to do now while we have the, the strength and the youth and the resilience and the capacity to overcome obstacles and to make the most of the time. Right? So three, three uh, reasons to make efforts now. Let me make sure we got everything on the homework. much clearer, Master Shanti David says, as we are destroyed by death, there are three causes which bring us to cry out. First, we expected some excellent results in our lives without exerting ourselves in virtue at all. We expected to live as long as an immortal being and we become increasingly sensitive to multiplying sufferings as we get older. How does Master Shanti David describe our priorities and perception of what is happiness? I mean, basically, we're attracted to causes of pain, and we, and we don't pursue causes of happiness, right? The things we pursue, TV, magazines, cafes, relationships, 
Um, they seem to cause happiness. They're fleeting, they're limited, they're small, and generally they bring us pain because they're mixed with non-virtue. So we do bad deeds to get what we want, being distracted by the hustle and bustle of the world, and we skip around mentally from one thing to another constantly without focus and without direction. So we're just, we're like, uh, you know, moths flitting around a flame. <coughs> and he says, we don't really pursue the true causes of our happiness, which are virtue. We, we abandon the true causes of our happiness. We do not pursue virtue. And instead, we pursue the causes of pain and suffering uh, and flit about from place to place, uh, mindlessly, I suppose you could say. All right, let's see if there's anything else. I don't want to go over too far. This is the abbreviated version. Okay. So that's it. You know, there. I mean, it's kind of uh, we're 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 deceived. You know, Master Shanti Dev is saying we're deceived by the reality around us, and we're deceived by ourselves. You know, these things we pursue, the outer things, work, relationship, money, fame, they all somehow hold the promise of happiness, but in point of fact, they're not the source of happiness. And so we're deceived and lied to, um, and our lives are squandered, and we die. So, um, these are his reasons for pursuing the six perfections. And, He's saying, make efforts now. Don't be lulled to sleep by any of the reasons which we typically give to ourselves, that it's okay to wait. It's not okay to wait. It's not okay to do it later. Um, it's not okay to plan for the future. Uh, we have to start now, and we have to do it now. And if we're not making efforts now, it's because we're deluding ourselves in one of the ways we talked about. And uh, you know, don't, don't be asleep like the sheep being led to slaughter. Wake up, make a plan for a uh, holy, uh, paradisical future, and put the plan into place and execute on it. You know, if we were unemployed and hungry, we'd make a plan, put it in place, and execute on it. You know, we should be doing the same thing with our spiritual practice. You know, Master Shantideva says, you know, get serious. You know, stop deluding yourself. Stop telling yourself all these stories. Make a plan and execute on it. You know, wake up and uh, do it happily. Do it joyfully. You know, pursue the perfections happily and joyfully. Just start. Start now. Do it every day. Do it regularly. Do it consistently. Do it happily, and you'll get better and better and better. And in your lifetime, things will radically improve, and you'll meet the higher teachings, and you'll be able to become enlightened in one lifetime with consistent, serious effort. So, please do. goodness may we instantly take joy in every virtue in ourselves and all our beings may we quickly perfect 
all six perfections, and you quickly enter the highest vehicle and end all suffering in this lifetime for ourselves and every other being.